Okay, now the record is on. Based on the uh, question that I received a few minute, minutes earlier, uh, I think it's, it's a very good question asking about why we don't have, or we are, going, we are not going to reach the rupture in steel, why we can use elastic perfectly plastic uh, behavior. So let's take a look at the member under tension. Uh, if you can recall, the stress that we have in tension member is a uniform tensile stress. So uh, we, if we consider tension members without any holes, and if, if we keep applying the tensile force with it, sometimes it's going to yield. And that is what the stress is going to look like. And when it comes down to compression member, still the stress is normal stress, right, perpendicular to the cross section. And if we keep loading uh, this member with the compressive force at any point in time, we are going to have the critical buckling stress where our compression member loses stability. Still, it is a normal stress, uniform stress. Okay. Now, when it comes down to flexion, I think the greatest uh, discovery is that after the first year occurs, when we have the stress that looks like this. Okay, uh, one second. Ah. Uh. So, okay, uh, the greatest discovery here is that when you reach the first yield in the flexural member, the beam can take some more and we can keep on loading the beam until the stress in the beam becomes the full yield like this, where you know, it, it yields across the entire section. It's FY in compression and FY in tension. And when this occurs, we are going to have a plastic hinge in the beam. So when this occurs, it means that you have another hinge which will cause your beam to become unstable because you already have a, say, determinate structure here, right? So to add another hinge here means instability. And this yielding should occur before we are going to get any rupture in our flexural member. So it is safe to say that we can simply employ this elastic, perfectly plastic behavior. And we are not going to stop just the first yield. We are going to stop when the failure completely occurs here. And this is, you know, the plastic hinge. That is exactly uh, what we have here. If you go back and take a look at chapter four, here, fully plastic. Okay. And um, this is uh, when we have the plastic hinge. And let's say where we are here. All right. So this, this explains it. Okay. And that means we can use this uh, stress distribution to come up with the stronger load carrying capacity for our flexural member. Okay. So that's when the plastic hinge occur, occurs. Okay. And we can use this. So now let us go back here and see what we can do with this. Now remember, one thing that I should say here now, that is this, is when you calculate your behavior previously, right? First yield, neutral axis, and uh, the stress here, your moment of inertia is based on this stress distribution, right? Actually, yes, this one. So you have your moment of inertia and you have your Y and then I over Y, or I over C, you know, that is the C distance, right? The maximum distance we call it C. The section property based on this is what we call S or elastic section modulus, okay? Whereby this is going to be something new that we will call plastic section modulus. The major difference is the stress distribution. Okay. Elastic section modulus. 
based on the first yield. And then this is plastic section modulus based on the plastic hinge or when your entire section yields, okay? Then the question, and you see, this will show you as well that, uh, you know, if we are in the initial stage, say right here, see, you're gonna reach the MY, this is first yield. Notice that you can still calculate the displacement of the structure based on the elastic formula. That's the elastic one, right? But then you can go beyond this until your section reaches MP, which is a plastic moment, where you have that uh, plastic uh, stress and your beam without any loading will just fail, okay? Due to local buckling, it's hard to explain, but you know, when the entire section yields, you know, it's just gonna buckle right there, okay? That's what's gonna happen. And we will not just stop at the MY, we'll go to MP, okay? So now, let's say this is what I just explained. If we are in the elastic region here, and we stop at the first yield, the section property that you, you, you get uh, from the elastic bending stress, MY over I, your Y is D over two, right? Or you can call it C, or Y or C, because C is the maximum value, or Y, it becomes a half depth of your structure. And we write that I over Y or I over C as the elastic section modulus. Likewise in both axes. Okay. Now, when, you when it's elastic and you have something that is not symmetric like this, you're gonna have to calculate your elastic neutral axis right, based on you know, the first moment. And when you calculate the elastic section modulus here, you have two distances, okay? This one and then that one. Now, you, which one you are going to use to calculate your section modulus? Hang on. Okay, so when, when the section becomes, uh, you know, like this, where the elastic neutral axis is not right in the middle, you need to be able to tell which Y you are going to use. And you can see that you are, you, you are going to use the greater one because it gives you the smaller elastic section modulus or, you know, in terms of behavior, you know that when the yielding occurs, it's going to reach the longer Y here will, will make you reach FY here first, okay? Now, when we, when we have fully plastic, what are we going to have? Now we know one thing, that is the entire section is going to yield, okay? So now we know that one stress is compression. Another one is tension. So now it becomes quite easy to calculate the force from the stress because it's uniform, right? should like it more, even more than elastic, where you need to perform some integration, right? So now if I sum up the force, this, is, this becomes compression, right? And that becomes tension. Now equilibrium tells us that this force better be equal and opposite. Otherwise your sigma, let's say X, okay? Sigma F X will not be under equilibrium. So from that case, because uh, the, the, the yielding occurs uh, throughout the section, 
we can easily say that uh, the compression equal to tension here. And that means because uh, we are going to have the area under compression and under tension. And somewhere where you have the axis that divides the area and gives you tension equal to compression, that axis is going to be what we call plastic neutral axis. Okay. So by uh, trying to locate this, uh, you have that, uh, the, the axis, which uh, will give you the internal equilibrium of the force in this direction, okay? So I can say that um, compression equal to tension. That means because the stress is uniform now, so we say the, Yielding U stress multiplied by the area under compression should be equal to the U stress and the area under tension. Simple as that. And in case we use one material in the section, or I can say U strength is equal, now you know that in order to locate the plastic neutral axis, you must find the axis where it breaks down the area into two equal areas, one under tension, one under compression. Okay, it's very simple. Once you know that, you know that the, your equilibrium is secure, it's time to calculate the internal moment. Okay, that now the internal moment should be equal to this compression multiplied by its moment arm, which is the distance from the plastic neutral axis to the force itself, and then tension multiplied by its moment up. Okay, so it becomes plastic moment, which is equal to the compressive force multiplied by its arm, and then tension multiplied by its arm. And again, I can replace the compressive force and tensile force by this, right? The area multiplied by the stress. And when the yield stress is equal, I can bring it out of the entire equation and I am now left with the first moment term, the area under compression multiplied by its moment arm and the area under tension multiplied by its corresponding moment arm as well. So in other words, I can rearrange this term and say it is sigma. A I Y I. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is called plastic section modulus. See, it's not elastic section modulus. Okay. So now, yeah, here. The summary is that the plastic section modulus, your section becomes fully plastic. It yields entirely, and it is based on plastic neutral axis. WRT is with respect to plastic neutral axis. And then Y is with respect to elastic neutral axis. This guy is where the centroid is, right? But this is not. Plastic neutral axis is the axis that, you know, gives you the equilibrium when the stress becomes plastic. Now, uh, before I get into that, one thing that you should know is that uh, it's going to yield before it reaches plastic. So we can safely say that this is our reserve strength, right? When the first yield occurs, you can still go on. So that becomes the, the reserve strength that we are going to use. And to determine the reserve strength, sometimes we use the shape factor, which is basically MP over M1. Now, is there any question on this? Hello. Okay, so one thing that you guys need to know. Now, this is fun. And I have to say this every year, can you imagine that? Now, AISC and EIT, 
which uh, is the spec for the calculation of or the approximation and prediction of the flexural strength of your member. In elastic behavior, elastic section modulus, they call it S. And then plastic section modulus, they use Z, as you have seen. But the catch is this, the TIS, the industrial standard, the more or core thing, they call elastic section modulus Z. And they don't have it here. They don't have the plastic value for you. So keep in mind, if you in the future use the TIS catalog, you think you have the plastic section modulus? No, the Z in the catalog is for elastic section modulus. So, you, be, you, you must be aware of that. And you look here. In my, section, in my table, I have both. I have S, which is elastic section modulus, and I also have Z, which is plastic section modulus of the section. Keep in mind that you see Z is always greater than S. Okay? And if you somehow get your hands on the catalog based on TIS, you will see that that Z is ex exactly the, the S here. Now, I think I, I, I'm making a good guess here that uh, the reason behind this is this. Now, TIS generally, this, they base everything on JIS, which is Japanese industrial standard. And I bet that the Japanese in the, in the old days, they cannot pronounce S they can pronounce Z. So they, instead of using an S, they use Z and we just take everything from them. So we, we change this into Z, which mixed up with uh, AIC and EIT because EIT is also based on AISC, right? And now uh, AISC always use this for a very, 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 very long time. And this is the old days. So be aware of what you are going to have to use. Okay, and in the market where the manufacturer has to provide you with a catalog, they are only obliged to give you the properties according to TIS. So that's why they don't have to give you this. Now, I, uh, I think it's, it's uh, one of the things where you know, it hampers the use of steel structure, but now we have it and that these tables, I already give it to them. So they have it too. In the future, they should uh, start printing this, you know, the, the tables with all the engineering properties like this. But while waiting for their, for they to become a little less busy and print them out, you know, you guys have it and you can use this in the real world. Okay, so now you know. Is there any question? We are going to use this plastic thing. Okay, and see this shape factor is approximately 10% up to almost 20% for H shape, which means if we use MP, our plastic section modulus is approximately 10 or almost 20% greater than the uh, elastic section modulus for H shape in major axis. Okay, so is there any question about this? Now, it's just a summary of what I, I have used before. I've said before that when you have this, okay, I, I think we better look at the examples if you don't have any question. Because that's it, okay? Now, uh, when, when you have the doubly symmetric, it's fine because uh, everything is going to be at the centroid. But when you have a singly symmetric like this, that's where the fun begins, okay? because that's when the elastic neutral axis and plastic neutral axis 
should not, may not, will not be at the same location. But for doubly symmetric, they will be. Okay, so is there any question? If there isn't, let's take a look at uh, some uh, example, okay? Calculate the uh, MY and MP and shape factor. It's a shape factor of this uh, built up section. Okay. Any question before I begin? I hope that I don't have to calculate the moment of inertia for you, do I? If you don't say anything, I will not show the calculation of momentum inertia, okay? But I, we are not going to try to measure your ability to calculate the moment of inertia in this section, so, you know. So this is doubly symmetric. You can say E and A and P and A, both neutral axes are at the uh, central of the section. Okay. And MY, that's going to be FY and SX. Okay. Boy, hang on. Sorry guys, I'm back. <clears throat> okay. Um, so um, the moment of inertia, you know, calculated based on the elastic neutral axis where it's just right there in the middle should be okay. So can I skip this? Or I should do it for you. Come on, one, two, three. Do it or not. Anyway, um, because it's easy. So let me just do it a little bit. Ix, because I want to show you that in the real calculation, you know, just for a section like this, the moment of inertia in the x axis only comes from the flange. And we have two flanges, correct? And the, uh, hang on. Right, the, the area of the flange is. Uh, it's in millimeters, but I'm going to do it in centimeter now, okay? So it's 1.2 multiplied by 15. That's the area, and the d square becomes uh, a half of 42.5 plus a half of the thickness of the flange, correct? Yeah. And then for the flange itself, you see, you would have something like um, 15 multiplied by 1.2 cube over 12, right? So generally in yeah, approximation engineering way, we can say, I don't want that one. It's kind of close to zero, okay? And then plus the web itself, which is uh, 0 0.8, 42.5 uh, cube over 12. That's the A square term, and then that's the web. So that, that's pretty much it. So basically, this is roughly 22300 zero, zero, centimeter to the power of four. And the elastic section modulus, which is I over Y or I over C, whatever you want to call it, becomes 22300 zero, zero, divided by that, uh, oh, no, not that distance exactly, but it's 42.5, half of that, plus the thickness of the plant, correct? And that gives me 994 to the power three, okay? Next one is plastic section one. Now the definition is that 
say I should write somewhere elastic, maybe. Plastic. Now the definition is the sigma a i y i. So I am going to uh, calculate the first moment of the area of say this piece. And then that piece, and then that piece, and then that piece. Please know that I try to, uh, you know, uh, separate the color so that you can see that we need uh, to calculate uh, four pieces, right? My favorite rice. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so now, Okay, sorry. Um, okay, sorry. So let's uh, calculate. Uh, we begin by uh, just summing up. Oops, I'm sorry. Summing up the formula, it's a sigma AI YI. Okay. So now we have two of everything. So it's, it's uh, better to say, okay, two of this web. Now remember, you, don't, uh, you, can, you should take a, a piece by piece. So we have the 0.8 multiplied by 42.5. And then, and then multiply by its arm, which is 42.5 over two. Okay, and that takes care of the web. Now we, did, we, we take a look at the flange. Now we have 1.2 multiplied by 15. And then the distance becomes 42.5. I'm sorry, um, because we split it into two, this better be over two and that better be over four, right? You guys better help me. And this is better be over two and then plus 1.2 over two. Okay, that, that is. Yep, it looks like it. And this will give us the plastic section modulus, which is equal to 1148 uh, cubic centimeter. Okay. Okay, so now um, that's uh, elastic section modulus and that's plastic section modulus. Notice that we uh, already have the bigger number. So when you want to calculate uh, the shape factor F, it is MP over MY and therefore it is FY S in X direction, say a strong axis, okay? over Fy and then Zx. See, Fy cancels out. So we have, oh, sorry, it's uh, the other way around. This is uh, Zx, this is Sx. So basically it's Z over S. And that gives me 1.60. So you see, um, uh, from this note, it says that, ooh, wrong one, this one, it says that it's roughly 1.1 to 1.18. So that means uh, we got 1.16, so that's okay, right? Now that's the strong axis. Now let's take a look at the weak axis, okay? Now, um, it's trying to be the same, oh, elastic, okay? Elastic this time, 
It's IY, isn't it? And IY is basically because now we are looking at this axis, right? So things look like this. We have two flanges and then one web. So it's two of, so the flange is 1.2 multiplied by the width, which is a 15 cube over 12, and then plus the moment of energy of the web, which is um, 42.5, 0.8 to the power of 3 over 12. And then again, look at this. We have 0.8 with power of 3. So it's gone. Don't care. Okay. So IY basically is roughly 675 uh, centimeter to the power of 4. And let's say plastic now. Plastic now, um, the uh, plastic section modulus is again ZY is sigma AI Y I. Okay, and now we have this piece again. Now we have four of them, right? This, this is one. This is another, this is one, this is another. And let's say, if we are going to split this very thin uh, thing apart, it's gonna be very, very close to zero. So I will stick to just the flat. So we have now four of the half area, which is 1.2 multiplied by, um, uh, 7.5, right? I better write 15 over two so that you see it. And then this distance become 15 over two and then over another two. So it becomes over four, okay? And that gives me the value of 135. Okay, I've got to do this. Um, SY is um, 675 over uh, 15 over two, right? And that's uh, 90. Okay, and now um, the shape factor for Y axis, this is for X axis. is essentially um, 135 over 90, and it is 1.5, okay? Okay. All right, so question please. And we have uh, five minutes left. I, uh, I probably wrap this up tomorrow. Okay, we will uh, have a, a better, smoother session, I hope. Okay, so is there, is there any question? I didn't include uh, the basic example here. I, I was surprised by myself. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to show it tomorrow to, to link with this one. But uh, in five minutes, I, I cannot complete it. Okay. And tomorrow we have plenty of time. And tomorrow, if you have any question regarding your work on the loading, please bring it on. Okay. It's still early stage of our design uh, project. So you, it's your opportunity to, to try to get things uh, clear before you actually do it. Okay, and uh, we may dedicate a few minutes more on this one so that, uh, you know, we are going very quickly in terms of the, uh, the uh, schedule. Okay, uh, question please.
question? Is there any question? Uh, let, let, let me stop the record.